I'm not terribly proud of my relationship with Hollywood because I was in there in a day and time when horses were treated so badly in the movies and other animals too. I watched the most dreadful training of dogs and wild animals, mountain lions and that kind of thing. I worked with some wonderful people and I worked with some very challenging people. My word, the first lassies that were ever done. Rudd Weatherwax. He was the most brutal, awful man to dogs you could ever imagine. And I worked with five lassies on one film that he would just beat with regularity. And he got them to do the things that he wanted them to do. And it looked nice on the film which I hated every minute of because I knew what it took to have that happen, you know? And having those Palomino horses stand on their hind legs for 20 minutes so that somebody could wave their hat and get the right footage was just awful. We had horses with hind legs that were damaged to the extent that they were put down because of it. And the whip breaking that they did if the horse goes away from you, you whip, whip, whip. And when the horse comes back to you with his ears back and fighting, that's when you get that challenging scene. And then you stop the whipping and he comes attacking. Horrible stuff, really horrible stuff. And it isn't necessary. You can do it without that, you know? And if it has to be that in the scene, change the scene. Um, you have to learn to live with these animals that mean so much to us. I wrestled with people the whole time. I went through the whole era of the running W where horses were tripped with a cable on the ground to fall. I was a part of all that. Joel McRae was a very nice man and he was a big star in those days and he helped me get rid of the running W. He was the influential part of it. John Wayne helped me, very big stars. I was just a kid that they laughed at, you know. I fought it. And I was successful in many ways. The Running W has been banned from the motion picture industry. And I'm proud of that. And do you know what that meant? They took the movies off to Mexico and to Hungary and the Czech Republic because the laws weren't available to them at that stage. But now it's come back. The motion picture industry has a better understanding of how to handle the animals now than they had in those days. I was a stunt person from the age of four. And my father rented me out during the week and weekend for competition. He was paid in cash out of a cigar box. And he always said he would keep my money for me. And he did. He kept every cent of it. I never saw any of it. But that was the way it worked in those days. There were no teachers on board. There was no ambulance there. There was no insurance care of the kids that were there doing this and they had me doing some extremely dangerous things in my stunt work. I worked with five different triggers for Roy Rogers. One of the early ones in 1943 my father received a call saying that they were filming in Northern California and that they brought a little girl from England and her mother said she can ride anything, she can jump these fences, it's no problem at all. And my father told me that this little girl was injured over the second fence she jumped or something like that and she was in the hospital with broken ankle and uh, injured back and that we're going tomorrow and you're gonna ride horses over fences and you're gonna ride horses in the sea along the ocean, 43, I was eight years old. And they said the little girl that I was riding for, with a wig on and a little hat, her name was Liz, last name Taylor. And when she died, and I put CNN on, and there I am going across the screen, in the water, on a horse. And I remember being right there, I remember the scene, and they said it was Liz Taylor running along there, and that she just died. That was in 43. And after that, I became very popular uh, because I was small and horses and kid films were the most uh, popular thing on the screens. 
So they used me a lot, all week long, falling out of stagecoaches, falling off horses, going in the river, you know, all sorts of things. And then I got away from, I really wanted to get away from it. I never got anything for it. My father kept the money and um, I never found it to be a, a gratifying experience. Although looking back on it now, I learned a lot from it and I met a lot of nice people, good people. Long after I stopped doing stunts, 1954, one of my old assistant directors came to me and said that Ilya Kazan, a, a big director, had just found a kid in New York on the stage that he wanted to bring out and put in a movie. The young man's name was James Dean, and he wanted him to be in the movie East of Eden. And he wants somebody to take him up and show him, teach him the culture of that part of the world. He said that he wanted him to come and live with me and really get to know everything that I do, learn to ride and all of these things. I had just started to date a girl that I eventually married, and I didn't want any part of it. I said, no, I don't want it. He said, there's $2,500 in it for you for four months. And I said, when does he arrive? I mean, $2,500 in those days was like a mountain of money, you know? And so they sent this kid to me, quiet, unassuming, disheveled young man, James Dean. And he lived with me for the four months, and then I was in East of Eden with him. Ilya Kazan was very happy with my work with James Dean, and I went right on to Rebel Without a Cause, and from there to Giant. James Dean was killed coming to my house in Salinas. I got the first call from a mechanic that was riding with him in a Porsche Spider that was uh, James's new car, and he was going too fast. And Dean was killed, and the mechanic was injured but not killed. He was gone, boom, out of my life. James Dean was coming to my house to buy a ranch near our home in Salinas, and my new wife and I were to run that ranch, which would have been a different life for us completely than the life that I've led since that time, so things happen, and sometimes for good and sometimes for not. I love the filmmaking industry. There's some things about it I would love to change, but I love the work that I did for the most part.